The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, dressed her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was getting evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill and possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages, that I may preach there also, for this is the purpose that I have come. So he went into the synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Last evening, we gathered here uh, for the celebration, the 40th day of Christmas, the presentation of our Lord in the temple. And we celebrated Holy Mass and Eucharistic adoration and benediction, divine mercy. And then we went down for three uh, different kinds of soup, uh, broccoli and cheese and chili and uh, lentils and uh, feasted. And then we celebrated around the bonfire and told stories till after nine o'clock. One of the things that we did on the piece of the presentation of the Lord in the temple, we blessed the candles that will be used uh, in our ceremonies. And after Mass, uh, Deacon David and I will bless your throats because today, February 3rd, is also the Feast of St. Blaise. You know, as we listen to God's Word, uh, we notice we're in a new month, the month of February. Well, a lot of people say that this is Tunnel Vision Month, Cabin Fever Month. This is the month when we get on each other's nerves. This is the month when uh, things get blown out of proportion. This is the month that people who love each other uh, are ready to strangle each other. <laughs> this is the month that uh, children and parents don't always see eye to eye. That too uh, will pass as spring unfolds. But it is a month, they say, don't make major decisions. Uh, because uh, we don't always make good judgment. It's also a month, as we hear the Word of God in the fifth week of Ordinary Time, the story of Job. Now, Job was a very good man. The devil told God, well, he's only good because everything always unfolds well for him. Uh, you know, pretty good life, pretty cushy life. He's got a beautiful family, uh, livestock, vineyards, uh, all the things seem to just always fall into place. And they said, uh, the devil said, uh, Satan, he wouldn't be that good uh, if things were not going so well. So what we begin to see is uh, a man lost everything. He lost his family, uh, lost his livestock, lost his vineyard, lost his health. He ended up with boils and sores all over him. And so that's where we find today's reading. We find Job crying out to God. You and I know that uh, there are different stages that we go through if we have a major crisis in our life. Uh, it might be a death, it might be a loss of a job, might be loss of health, might be a, a misfortune for a loved one. Uh, uh, these kinds of things throw us into a tizzy, they throw us into a turmoil. I was in Washington, D.C. at uh, Georgetown uh, at the National Cathedral, that's where five presidents gathered after 9-11, our national calamity, uh, back in 2001. And so uh, that was where I heard Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. She has written many books uh, specifically on death and dying. This week I'll be at Muskingum University teaching a class on the stages, but also the Catholic response to suffering and death and, of course, resurrection and hope. 
uh, what is our journey. Well, that journey is very well represented in our journey through the seasons of the church. We just wrapped up the Christmas season. We have a little bit of ordinary time. That's why the deacon and I are wearing green. But very soon, February 14th, will be Ash Wednesday. And uh, we'll bring our palms uh, next Sunday, and then we'll burn them, and we'll place them on the forehead. And uh, the priest or the deacon or the distributors will say, remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return, or repent and believe in the gospel, or repent and be saved. Uh, there's this sense of renewal, this sense of metanoia, this sense of change of heart, uh, getting close to God, uh, turning over a new leaf. Well, Job today, uh, these things were eventually restored to him, but he went through a very difficult time. And this Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, uh, she has different stages that we go through, some maybe more or less. But first of all, when a calamity or we find out we're uh, going to die or mortality is staring us in the face, there's denial. This can't possibly be happening to me. And then she says there's anger. Uh, and then there is this bargaining. You know, I'll do anything. You know, I'll, I'll mend my life. I'll, I'll give everything away. Uh, so denial, anger, bargaining, and then eventually there's acceptance and hope. Well, we find uh, in the book of uh, Job, but also in the book of Lamentations, in the Psalms, uh, we find this uh, story of wrestling with God. And that's all right. That's being honest with God. I visit the uh, sick a lot. As a matter of fact, I just visited... Uh, one that's always with us. I've just had hip surgery, Bob, and I'm going to visit our other Bob, Deacon Bob, Monday. Uh, he just had five bypasses and some stents and some all kind of valves and everything uh, in Columbus, Monday after Mass. Uh, so we see that journey of people that we know and love and are right here with us. Uh, visit the nursing homes and the homes and uh, the hospitals uh, every week. One of the things that we know in our own journey of life is that we are called, and the answer lies in the gospel and in the second reading, to be with Jesus. When we realize what he did for us, he, he suffered, he died, uh, he was scourged, he was beaten, he was ridiculed, he was mocked, bruised, derided, cursed, defiled, she beheld her tender child are the words of the Stabat Mater. Well, we'll be celebrating the Stations of the Cross every Wednesday at St. Anne and every Friday here at St. Mary. And following that, we'll celebrate Holy Mass every Wednesday and every Friday. So we have a lot of opportunities uh, to make this journey, and we'll talk more about it next week. I think that as we understand our belief in Jesus, St. Paul in his letter to the Corinthians puts it pretty simply. He said, I'm a slave for Christ. In other words, we die to ourselves and we let Christ live within us. I get to do this all the time to see the fervor, the enthusiasm, the zeal. It's over St. Peter and Paul, the retreat center uh, Friday night and was with uh, several folks from uh, the Upper Arlington uh, area, Bishop Watterson, and they were having what they called a Kairos retreat. There were 84 students. Tonight, after Mass, I'll be with 200 students from Ohio State and Ohio Dominican up to Damascus, and uh, I'll be with them about three hours, and they're on a three-day weekend retreat, and they will let the gospel take so much a hold of them that they uh, allow God to work through them. You know, in today's gospel, we hear that Jesus drives out demons. We've been hearing a lot about that. Uh, unclean spirit. We live in a culture, and we think, well, you know, that seems a little bit archaic, maybe a little bit primitive. Uh, you know, that seems a little bit almost superstitious. But there is evil. There are demons in the world. We all have our little Satan, a little demon. Uh, remember the story of John Bellucci, the little devil on one shoulder, the little angel on the other trying to get us to do this or that? Uh, you know, we laugh, but that's what happens. And so we allow ourselves 
uh, to be in the presence of Christ, to let Christ live through us. Uh, also, Jesus in the gospel performs miracles, healing. You know, it's very profound that here in this place, Father Theodore Mattingly, in writing, uh, said, and it's in our parish history, this would be a place of miracle and pilgrimage with the healing. You know, we have three shrines to our Blessed Mother in our little church right here. Of course, we have our grotto uh, made with stones from each of the 88 counties as we enter into church. We have uh, a beautiful grotto fashioned by the uh, big sandstones from the early 1800s from the farms and the barns uh, that were around here with Our Lady of Lourdes and Bernadette Subaru. And then we have Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, uh, 1952, uh, Pope Pius XII uh, dedicated uh, our country and dedicated Russia to Our Lady. And so we have a beautiful shrine, the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So three shrines all have to do with healing. You know, there's not just physical healing, but there's emotional healing. There's mental healing. There's anguish that we have that and torment that needs to be healed. There's spiritual healing. There's psychological healing. Uh, and I think that that's not just for the time of our Lord. I think that that's also for our time. You know, our bishop always says we have to kind of balance our thinking in this. Uh, there is healing. And we should expect it. But there is also redemptive suffering. And not that we uh, want suffering, because uh, sometimes it changes our personality so much that we're not ourselves. We're like a cantankerous old curmudgeon. Uh, you know, we're irascible. We're hard to live with. Uh, and it can change uh, the good spirit, the good nature. Uh, we can see some of that in Job today. But we need healing. We need healing. I remember uh, being with Ruth Carter Stapleton at the inauguration, and I prayed with her the night before her brother was uh, um, inaugurated. And she says, we need healing of memories. And that always stuck with me. Some people just ruminate. Uh, they just have this old tape, and it just keeps over and over again. An old hurt, an old wound. Uh, there are many times that we've been violated for one reason or another. Uh, we've been abused. Uh, and God wants us to be healed of this. I'm with a lot of folks that have post-war uh, syndrome, post-traumatic syndrome, uh, and God wants that to be healed. He doesn't want us to be tormented every time we hear a backfire on a car, every time we roll over in bed, every time uh, a firecracker goes off, all those images to be in our mind. And so today, we see that we can wrestle with God. We can be honest with God. We can be sincere. We can allow uh, our feelings to be like Jesus. Remember on the cross, he cried out, Ele, Ele, lama sabachthani. My God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? And then his next words, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit.